In this video, we'll make a wireless transmitter by using MSP400 and 30 microcontroller and NRF24 transceiver module. On the receiver side, we'll again use the NRF24 module, which will be controlled with Arduino Nano. We'll see how to make the connections, and then by using Arduino IDE and Code Composer Studio, we'll program our microcontrollers. Finally, we'll test our setup by sending an integer array from the transmitter to the receiver in a loop. First, let's start with the connections between the MSP430 and the NRF module. We are going to connect the 3.3V pin on the MSP430 to the VCC pin, the ground pin to the ground pin on the NRF module. Let's write these down. This is ground and this is VCC 3.3V. And we are going to connect P2.5 pin to the CE pin. You can follow the colors as well. CE P2.5. P2.4 pin is going to be connected to the S clock pin. The green line going through the S clock. And let's write it down again. P2.4. P2.3 pin is going to the CSN pin on the NRF module. Let's connect it and let's write it down. CSN P2.3. And P2.0 pin will be connected to the master out slave in pin on the NRF module. Let's write it down as well. P2.0. And finally, P2.1 pin will be connected to master in slave out pin on the NRF module. To that one and we won't be using the IRQ pin. You can connect a 100 microfarad capacitor between the ground and VCC. In my application I didn't use it. Now let's take a look at the receiver side. In the receiver side 3.3 volt pin will be connected to VCC, grounds will be connected, CE will be connected to D8 pin, CSN will be connected to D7, S clock D13, master in slave out D12, and master out slave in D11. And you can see that we also have the capacitor between the ground and the VCC. Now let's connect our MSP430, which has the NRF module connected. Let's connect it to our laptop, and it has power now. And we can connect our receiver side, which is Arduino plus the NRF module. Okay, it's connected and it has power. Now let's create our CCS project for the transmitter for MSP430. Let's name it MSP430 NRF24 transmitter. It's going to create our project and it's going to give us our main.c file. And now we are going to go to my GitHub page, which has the NRF24 MSP430 repository, and we are going to click on main.c file. You can see the content of the main.c here. We are going to select this file. We are going to Copy it. Let's copy that and we are going to paste it to our main.c file. You don't have to change anything. We will just save the file. Save now. Now we are going to add our header file. So for that, let's go to the project and right click to choose new 
and header file and let's name it nrf24.h this name has to be the same and now we have our nrf24 file let's go to the repository once again choose this time nrf24.h and now we can see the header file let's select it and let's copy it and paste it instead of our header file you don't need to change anything as well just save it now our code is ready for the transmitter now for the receiver side let's open arduino id and use the rx arduino code in the repository let's select the file it's comparatively short to the msp file let's copy it and paste it here and we can save this file after saving the file we can upload it to our receiver so it's going to compile and upload but you need to make sure that you have the rf24 library installed you can check it from the manage libraries you can see that it's installed in the communication libraries this one rf24 installed now let's have our ids in the same picture our ccs and arduino id let's debug our code for the transmitter so let's click on proceed after the debugging our code is ready to run let's open the serial monitor to observe the output on the receiver side so once we click on resume you can see that we have our eight integers being constantly sent to the receiver so if we change for example our payload let's give some random numbers random integers in the payload array let's change them okay we have changed all eight values we can save stop the running configuration and then we can click on debug once again you will see that at some point the receiver won't receive anything because it stopped now as we run our code once again on the transmitter with resume we are going to see the updated values here you can see that we are sending constant values as the payload but you can have other values being sent to the transmitter you can use the outputs of the adc module for example which will be very beneficial